Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian and I'm a structural engineer. We can learn a lot by doing and making and testing. And we've been looking at domes and how forces can be carried through the surface of a structure. So um, a homework I used to set to the students at uh, MIT and, and Harvard that I used to teach is to create a surface structure, a dome, a shell, and test it. And you can do this quite easily. You can get cheesecloth and plaster of Paris Essentially, you put the plaster, make a shape and put plaster of Paris on the cheesecloth and, and let it set. Essentially, freeze a form in some way from what was flexible cheesecloth. The key here is choosing what shape to use, right? How to make that shape, what that shape is in terms of curvature, such that it can be efficient for the loads it's carrying. So you're going to see now, we did this um, as a little fun activity uh, where uh, we used uh, soccer balls initially to put the cheesecloth around to, to make a sort of spherical dome, put the plaster Paris and have that set. So let's see how that went. All right. So here we've chosen to do the form as balls. Hmm. So spherical domes. Interesting. Okay. Let's Are you doing how... a video? Yeah, I am. Okay. Good job. <laughs> And here they are, finished and dried, or as I was saying, frozen into the shape that they now are. So now we're ready for a load test of the spherical structure. It may be hard to see, but by this stage we've removed the soccer ball that was being used as the form, and what we're left with is the frozen spherical shape of the cheesecloth, and then the rest that we didn't put plaster Paris on. Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to be testing different weights on this platform. Okay, weight number one. Yes! Wait, number two. That is okay. <gasps> Wait, number three. Ooh, see if you can balance it. Oh, let go. Does it work? Yeah. It did? Yeah. Wow, okay. Let's see it again. Nice. A bit wobbly. Okay, this is quite a heavy one. Number four. <laughs> what? Oh, in the middle? Let go? Oh wow. Did that take it? You kinda let go of it? Oh, now do you wanna do you wanna yeah. try standing on it? No. Go on, let's give it a go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can we put it on the floor. Mm. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Go. That definitely did not work. It crumpled. It crumpled? Why don't you just totally crumple it? Put put it see if, see what it crushes at. Oh, that's definitely a crumple. <laughs> that's a buckle. Buckle? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we saw how those local loads really managed to buckle in the top of the sphere, and that's because a spherical shape and a point load at the top have nothing to do with each other. Right? This is much like... Um, the, if you take a, an, an egg and you try and crush it as you put your hands all around it, and even though the eggshell is very thin, it's, it's almost impossible to crush that egg. However, you take the edge of a spoon, or more relevantly, let's say, a, a beak of a chick, you know, well done nature, it's incredibly easy to break that thin eggshell with that point load. So this is more about having the right forces related to the shape. So we also did some square-like shapes of cheesecloth that we draped and they kind of made a symmetrical vault. That was sort of interesting. Notice we're using gravity here to have this shape be upside down because what we're interested in later is having those same gravity loads but as we reverse the shape, just like cable to arch. And this is my favorite. We took a very long strip of cheesecloth and we cut a bunch of holes in it. A lot of holes. We had very little material left. But that's the point we're trying to get to here, which is if we're smart and we have that material distributed correctly, let's say hanging that shape, making it essentially a 3D version of a cable, so there's lots of cables essentially going through this, right? Then let's see what it does as we reverse it. Let's see if this works. Okay, so this is the piece that's finally set. If you remember, it was just fabric and really just cheesecloth. Let's see if I can pull this out safely. And I think it's set. So it's all hanging in tension. 
the cloth was in tension. This is still in tension. And what we're going to try and see is if in one go, whoa, let's see, in one go, can I make this change into compression? And that's <laughs> how you make fabric go into compression because we started with the right shape and tension, then made it solid, froze it. And there we go. Check that out. Da, 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 da.